All right, in this video, we're going to do the squeeze theorem. We're going to do our second example. So we have the limit as x approaches 0 of x cubed cosine of 50x. Now, what's nice about this problem is that it really doesn't require the squeeze theorem. Uh, if, if I just plug in 0, I get 0 cubed, which is 0, and that's fine, cosine of 50 times 0, and that's just 0 times cosine of 0. And that is, um, well, 0 times 1, which is 0. So I, I know that the limit's going to be 0. I really don't need the squeeze theorem here, but I, I do like this example because it does demonstrate, again, what the squeeze theorem does and why we even use it in the first place. When you're given a problem that looks like this, usually they'll say, uh, show that the limit equals 0, or they might actually just say, find the limit, but sometimes questions in the book will say, show or prove that the limit equals zero. So here's what you do. You have your first goal, which is to bound. Now, most problem, or <clears throat> there are some problems that don't do this. Uh, this is uh, when you have like a polynomial times a trig function, you would end up doing this. You would bound cosine of 50x, which if you remember from trig, Cosine and sine are always bounded between negative 1 and 1. All right, that's fine. I don't I really need it at the moment, but that's just kind of a quick uh, review, is that cosine is always between negative 1 and 1. Second is that you need to find two functions specifically, you know, functions that are showing up in your limit. So find two functions that meet at the same place. So meet at the same place. I'll just say the same y value when x equals 0. I already talked about what cosine does. It's always between negative 1 and 1. Uh, but notice that we have this x cubed here. So if I were to say um, let g of x equal negative x cubed. I'll explain the negative in a moment. Uh, and then h of x equals positive x cubed. Uh, let's go ahead and graph that. Okay, so there is h of x up here, and then g of x is down here. Okay, so why was this piece important? Notice that the cosine of 50x is in here. It's right here. All right, what happens if, and this is something from algebra, if you're going to multiply something to one side of an inequality, you got to do it to all sides. So if I have, uh, if I multiply all sides by x cubed, all right, I'm going to get negative x cubed because that's what negative 1 times x cubed is. And then I'm going to get x cubed times cosine of 50x times positive x cubed because 1 times x cubed is x cubed. And notice that this, that is the limit I'm trying to find. The limit uh, as x approaches 0, I have it up here. Okay, so and I just what I just did, the whole point of this was to find two functions, one that's smaller, one that's bigger, that your, your function, the one you're trying to find the limit of, is in between. So it's in between these two. That was the whole point of this. Uh, some squeeze theorem problems don't require you to do this, uh, but this one does. And notice that x cubed and negative x cubed meet right there at 0. So now I just showed that this function stays between this one and this one. All right, We know that the limit of negative x cubed as x approaches 0 equals the limit of positive x cubed as x approaches 0. And you just showed me this. So the squeeze theorem states that the limit of the middle function, which is x cubed cosine of 50x, as x approaches 0, must also equal 0. Now, just because I can't resist, I'm actually going to graph x cubed cosine of 50x so you can show you so I can show you what it looks like 
All right, so there you go. That's right here. This uh, complicated looking function is the x cubed cosine of 50x. And I already showed that it was going to be between x cubed, which that's x cubed, and then negative x cubed.